All right, four weeks ago, I posted part one to my ranking of all of the characters within Insomniac's universe. Now, as promised, I did tell you guys if I got 25 likes on that video that I would do a part two. It's taken me a little bit longer than expected, but here I am with part two. So as you guys can see, I have set up the tier list exactly the same as I kind of finished it in the last video, and I'm excited to go ahead and just get it done with you guys today. I also figured that I would do all of the characters first because, like I mentioned in the first video, I will also be ranking some of the more some, some of the more known like crime groups within the game. So like even the police are in there, but we have the demons, the magia, the underground, the hunters that comes with you know the new game. That you'll be able to see kind of the bigger groups of uh, enemies. Sable as well as in there, as well as I'm going to be ranking the Sinister Six in this universe. If you guys enjoyed the last one and you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. It helps me with the algorithm as I put a lot of time into these videos and it does take a while. So let's just hop in. Now the Mysterio missions. Now one thing I will say about this guys is I thought Mysterio was tackled super super well. Obviously if you guys don't know who Mysterio is, his main thing is illusions. Like we saw it in No Way Home. In basically every piece of media that Mysterio is in, he's kind of just like this subversion that you don't really think is coming. And one thing that Insomniac did really really well with this is I was completely completely off guard with the fact that throughout the entire time you're doing these like side missions with these you know Mysterio and his grunts and stuff you're not fighting him every time but he's there talking to you it was never Beck it was never Quentin Beck the entire time Quentin Beck was literally held captive in his back room and it was the two lady assistants that were working with him that were kind of putting you through all of these tests and basically trying to kill you throughout it obviously and we do get this really really cool boss fight with Mysterio in the end and I think just the way that they sent off the character as well with Miles Morales talking to him and then you're just like, wow, this guy got taken advantage of. He's not actually this, he's not like actual Mysterio like he typically is, right? Like maybe he was before, but not right now. And then at the end of the conversation, the dude just legit disappears out of thin air. I thought that was just amazing, like a uh, writing, submersion, like I, I just did not think that that was going to happen. The one gripe that I do have about Mysterio though, and I've got to just be completely honest is... I wanted to see him talk to Spider-Man, the, the original Peter Parker Spider-Man. I didn't want to see him um, necessarily, like, I, I wanted to see Miles with him, but I didn't want Miles to be the only person that he talks to. I just thought it would have been really, really cool to see an iconic villain with our iconic Spider-Man that we all know and love. I think just because of how much I liked it and just the submersion of it and just kind of like a new storytelling uh, with Mysterio, because we've seen him all too often just become you know the same exact character doing the same exact thing and like that's fine because that's that's like all these characters right but it was cool that they found a way to still make me be like what the hell i did not expect that so i think i'm gonna put him in the bottom of a tier actually all right guys norman osborne now this dude right here was written so well in insomniac's universe i mean he starts out being this super arrogant asshole being the mayor completely full of himself and you can like automatically tell that him and uh, Dr. Octavius just have a terrible relationship and he's very like, uh, you know, controlling. He's just like this, this guy that has all the power and money in the world, but you just don't think he should be that guy. You know what I mean? He's just all about making the money, all about making the executive decision. That's kind of his, his basis. What I will say is, in the second game, they completely changed the script on him. Even in the end of the first game with Doc Ock, like, throwing him off, threatening to throw him off a building, telling him to apologize and stuff, Norman, like, doubled down, man. Norman did not care. I really, really like how Insomniac went through with this second game and they focused on Norman being a father because I honestly didn't expect him to be so protective of Harry and it makes sense because his wife died of the same exact illness so him kind of introducing Venom and, and trying just to find all of these different like serums and things that to, to you know cure Harry and just prolong his life and just be the most protective person he can I mean there were parts in the second game where he was like screw the damage screw what's going on here with like you know the lab what's blowing up what's on fire he's like dude are you okay like Harry, are you good, man? So I really, really like that about his character. There was a point where he was uh, shown with his, like a, you know, five, five o'clock shadow was going on and Peter goes up to him while he's wearing the suit and he's just kind of, it, it seems like he like gave up on Harry. He's like, you've always been like a son to me. And it's like, I wasn't a fan of how he was acting during that. And I just didn't like that whole, that whole interaction was just like gross to me because it's kind of fucked up, man. But just overall, man, I thought the writing with this guy was just insane. It's setting him up to be one of the scariest villains going to be coming up in Spider-Man 3. I really, really do hope that that's going to be the case. Uh, I, I would assume that's the case. We know Doc Ock's returning, so it would be super sick to see Norman finally get his, like, revenge or just try to go after something, and that's kind of a case. 
Um, and I think Norman's just, I mean, he's definitely better than Harry in terms of, of storytelling. I want to say it's, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy to like put him up here. And I, I have no idea, like Green Goblin in this next game, if he's in it could be a total wash. It could be terrible somehow. I, I have trust in Insomniac that it won't be, but I'm just saying like, there's no guarantees, but as his story is written right now, I, I think Norman is, is a very, very strong character. And for me, I think he, I think he has to go up. I want to say like right here, right between Venom and Tombstone and S-Tier. He's an S-Tier character for sure. Next, we got the boy, the one, the only, the Dr. Octavius. Need I say more? Need I say more? I mean, this guy was like a father figure to Spider-Man. This guy was the main focus of our job in the first game. Uh, Peter's mentor, just everything that he really like inspired to be. I mean, this this guy completely just like flipped the script, became Doc Ock, as we all know and love. And I'd say that this this uh, character arc and this kind of uh, character portrayal is on there with like Alfred Molina as Doc Ock, as we could see in the Sam Raimi universe. I mean, it is just god tier. It, I mean, it's god tier. Like the writing with this guy, the fact that they're bringing him back for the third game. If you guys haven't seen the end of Spider-Man 2 in the cutscene, I'll go ahead and play a clip. But yeah, man, I mean, this guy, this guy's a god. Like, come on, this is probably one of the best written characters that we can even see in these games. And I would say it's not even close, but like all these characters are written so masterfully, but he's up there. He's definitely up there, top of S tier for me anyway. Now we get back to some characters, I guess a character. I guess we have Mysterio in here twice. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw back up here, guys, just to kind of be quick. Uh, they're, they coincide in the same character. I think Mysterio Beck, that's like the same thing. But we're going to go in here with the Tinkerer. The Tinkerer, I was just not a fan of, man. Now, when Tinkerer was first introduced uh, in the Miles Morales game, which technically, I don't recall if she was shown in the trailer. I want to say she was. But the second that I saw character, like, art, the, you know, the direction of, like, the way that she looked, I could tell it was a she. The second that they introduced Finn as a character... I absolutely knew who it was. I mean, there was no submersion there. I knew she was the one with, it, with, with underground. I didn't know, like, the backstory to it all. The way they used the nanotech in this game was just a really easy way to kind of make different bad guys and grunts and things to fight throughout the game. They had shields, their, their fists that they had, whatever, swords, weapons, rifles, whatever it was. Like, it, I understand it, but I just wasn't a huge fan of it because it was just... Every enemy, even if they had like different weapons, felt the exact same to me. Like there was no difference in technology. It was all the same. I, I like I said, I knew who it was from the beginning. So for me, Tinkerer, Finn as a character was all right, and I liked her and Miles' backstory and everything. And, and the fact that she kind of, you know, the ending of Miles Morales, I'll say, you know, with her and Miles was pretty touching. I'm not gonna lie. Um, she's gonna be definitely at the lower end of the list for me, and I honestly think that she's probably damn i'm doing it i'm putting her in the top of uh the top of c tier guys i just i'm not a big fan of the tinker i really don't think that she even belongs up in the top of b tier i'm gonna be kind of realistic here when i when i call these people out but like you know that's where i'm at next we have peter parker as spider-man and god dude we can't have the game we can't even have the game without this man right like it's just impossible you know what i'm gonna say this with his writing from the first game definitely top of s tier with his writing from the second game, I know things need to happen. He needs to get the symbiote. He needs to be stabbed by Kraven. Uh, and I, I get that Harry was around him. There was a lot of other circumstances. He's tired and all that kind of stuff. I do think that he's just going to drop one spot in S tier solely for the reason that he doesn't dodge the knife. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are complaining about it. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying Insomniac can write their story however they want. I mean, Spider-Man's damaged by other people and other media and nobody complains. Kraven had a bunch of uh, special like serum and potions in him as well. So there's there's a lot stacking up onto his odds there. But just because there's like even a an ounce of discussion on that, you know, in his spider sense and everything and the fact that he's been doing it for so long, it's good for me it's gonna drop him down i'm gonna let doc ock kind of you know reign supreme right now so that's where i'm gonna put spider-man not much needing to be said about him him and the way that he bounces off other characters in the game just makes it just such an enjoyable experience it makes it feel real he makes people like aunt may just absolutely shine i mean this guy even if he's not your favorite character in the game which he should he damn right probably should be his impact on every other character in the entire story whether they're talking in the scene or not like everybody has their own personalities and it bounces off of the original interactions that peter has with them and it just it makes you feel like everything that you're seeing is a comic book i mean this guy is just insane. Alright guys, next we have Rick Mason who was in Miles Morales Spider-Man game and 
I'm gonna be honest. The, the one thing that I do remember about this guy is the scene that he has with uh, him inside of Roxxon trying to shut everything down. And when I saw the cutscene of this guy and Finn kind of watching what was happening, it was legit at that point that I decided, that, like, you know what? The Tinkerer isn't terrible. Finn as a character isn't terrible because she has a great reason to be doing what she's doing. But Rick literally gave her story just such such an incredible light, and it, it really made me kind of feel for her in a way that I just did not feel the entire game until I saw that one point. And it really elevated the end game for me. Um, whereas if that didn't happen and, you know, every all the events played out as they would, obviously I care about Miles and Rio and the city, and, you know, and everything like that. But I think Rick really did put in a lot of work to kind of elevate the end of Miles Morales. So shout out to my man. He's going to be bottom of B tier. He's got to be above the Tinkerer because like I said, he just kind of elevates the story like that. So I like him a lot. Not much of him other than that one thing that I can remember, but bottom of B. All right, guys, we have the next one, which is going to be Mary Jane and her character design was pretty good. I think she looks a little bit better in the second game, but I think for some reason, the pixels of her face just don't look as real. Like they don't look as realistic. I, I kind of feel that way with a lot of the characters in uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2. And I think it's because they tackled such a bigger world, a bigger, you know, overall kind of scale of everything. So I think that some things kind of got dumbed down. Still looked great though. Uh, and there was a huge complaint in the first game that she just wasn't strong enough and was really weak and just had a lot of slow missions. It was very like much of a drag when you went from playing a Spider-Man to go to, you know, a character like MJ. But what I've always said, and I said in the last video is without people, who ground the story and, and kind of let us view what's happening from their own point of view. It almost like numbs you to the fact that like you're moving so fast and doing things so efficiently as Spider-Man. Like for me anyway, I just, I do really cherish the missions where you don't have superpowers and you have to, you know, walk around as Miles in the first game or walk around as MJ trying to, you know, take pictures of things that are really, really helpful. Obviously they're not gonna be like insane, incredible feats, but Insomniac doubled down. They were like, you know what? Screw what everyone has to say. They put Mary Jane Watson into the second game with a gun and goddamn she just run through everything there was not anything that stopped her i remember every mission that i had with her there wasn't an ounce of me like stopping i held forward on the stick right and i just i just killed everything bro there was no there was literally no stopping mj in this game she went through and took out literally like half of craven's hunters like there was just no stopping it i'm not gonna lie it was pretty fun it was pretty fun i, I was like damn i'm getting through these missions pretty fast you know like I i'm i'm gonna have the footage for this game in no time but um i don't know man that doesn't really like sway my ranking at all i think it's cool that they kind of gave her like a less of a, of a, of a uh, role in the first game in a sense in terms of power wise and power scaling and then the second game they're like Fuck it. we're just gonna she can do everything. I think that MJ plays a humongous role in both of the games, obviously, and she's always there for all the characters. I think that she's honestly just up there with Harry, except we see a lot more of her, so that's that's good. And I want to say I like her a little bit more than Sandman, even. I think I do. Hey, now I know I got a little bit of redhead in me, but don't hate me for putting all of the redheads in S tier, okay? Cletus is down there at the bottom, so you guys got a little bit of slack for that in the last video, but you know, I don't really care. Like, I just didn't he just, he didn't wow me at all, you know? So, all right, so next we have Craven the freaking Hunter, AKA Spider-Man Killer, AKA strongest bad guy in the game, AKA kills Scorpion, kills the Vulture, some of my favorite characters. And for that reason specifically, uh, this man's gotta be at least up here, above the Scorpion, above Venom, above all of that, because he, he wanted to get his head bit off by Venom. Like, as much as he lost, he just won. <laughs> He won, man. Like, he, there was no denying that. I, I still think I like a lot of the main characters, like uh, Aunt May, Spider, the two Spider-Men, and then Otto. I think I like them more. But as a villain, um, other than Doc Ock, because he's kind of like my favorite Spider-Man villain ever, there's just, like, not much to say. Like, he's just up there. No matter what you want to say about this guy, if you don't, if you didn't like Kraven in the past, he showed up to this game ready for business, and he just gave zero reps, and uh, he's going to be in the top five, bro. He just has to be. All right, guys. Uh, screwball. What I'm going to say is I hated every second of every mission that had to do with Screwball because it was, hey, there's bad guys at this location, and there's a hostage. Go figure it out. You go there. You deal with grunts. 
like you do normally. And then it'd be like, hey, there's more over here. Go there. And there was like QR codes you'd scan and stuff. I mean, I get that the, the puzzle aspect of it, but her as a character and just the way that it played, like, I'm gonna be honest, it was, she was annoying. Whoever voice acted for her did a great job. It was it was honestly like the same way that I feel about uh, the Suicide Squad, like Harley Quinn, more so the game than than like the move like the movies and stuff. But they did they did a really good job of making her really annoying, and uh, her character in that sense was great. And obviously you don't know, fight her because she doesn't have powers and she's trying to you know legally make things really really hard for you. But in a way, obviously in the end, like when her followers continuously are told where to go and they're criminals and all that she's gonna eventually get in trouble i just think that the way that it played the idea was good i liked what they were thinking about it and i, I it's okay, like I'm, I'm okay with it being in the game but just going through and playing it all was just very very annoying i think i'm gonna put her in d tier i think she's gonna be one of the only d tiers uh, i'm not sure if i'm gonna add more yet but she sucks next we got silver sabla nova and this chick was pretty sick i'm not gonna lie i liked her her whole entire army, which is a whole nother ranking in itself, was amazing. But everything about this chick, I liked her personality, her attitude, the way that she eventually teams up with Spider-Man after hating him throughout the game. And I mean, Spider-Man like had such an impact on her that she was this like ruthless mercenary. And she was like, I'm going to go back into my homeland and rethink what I'm doing. Like she had a character arc. She had a pretty cool character arc throughout the game and uh, throughout the first Spider-Man game. And I uh, I really liked it. I'm not going to lie. I think she deserves to be up of B tier. And I think she's going to be right underneath Hammerhead just because I don't know what it is. I really like the Hammerhead fight and, and just everything about him. Yeah, top of B tier. All right, need I say more? You guys don't even need me to say the name of this character, but I'll say it anyways. Stan Mother Freaking Lee. Now, this guy created so much about everything that I love in this universe. Not even this universe, but in the world in general. The cutscene that we get with him where he's looking at MJ and Peter, and he's like, you guys always were my favorite. Like, it hits different, man. It, it really hits different. I think they, the quality of his face in, in the game and just like how wet, like it looks just like him. Like it is timeless. I really, really do hope that in more uh, future games, we still get lines from him uh, and, and pictures and videos of him like still talking to us through that kind of a lens because kind of like the same thing as uh, Kevin Conroy passing away as the voice of Batman. It's, it's something that's so iconic, even just his cameos. You just appreciate everything that's kind of came before you, and uh, I don't know, man. For me, it's got to be top of S. You just can't debate that. It's Stan Lee. All right, guys. Simon Krieger is a fucking asshole, and I don't like him, but he's a really good villain, and he has no superpowers, and I really, really liked him as the villain because I wanted to punch his face the second I saw it. He kind of looks like... He looks exactly like Topher Grace. And I thought that that guy was a very punchable, ignorant kind of guy. I know a lot of people like him from, there's a TV show that he's in and I haven't really watched it. That 70s show is what it was called. But I never really watched that. Um, that's kind of getting besides the point of this ranking. This guy has a punchable face, uh, a powerless, powerful villain because he takes control of Rhino. I really liked him. I really do think that he deserves to at least be up, uh, you know, in this ballpark. I think because Rhino's personality was so sick and like, he's like, come on little spider and stuff to like Miles, it made you just be like, come on bro, like let's go. I think he's gonna be underneath Rhino, but I think he's just right up there with them, man. He's just a really, really good bad guy. Getting to the end of the actual specific characters individually, we have the Kingpin. Now Kingpin being the first boss and the opening, to the first Spider-Man game that we got with Insomniac's universe, knowing that we had been chasing him for about eight years, and he actually plays a role with throughout that entire game, even in prison, uh, with a bunch of his goons and kind of just setting up, you know, a lot of panic in the city. I have a weird feeling that he's going to return for this last uh, game that we get because that's just kind of Kingpin's thing. You can lock him up, you can put him away, but he has everyone in his pocket, and at the end of the day. It's kind of like what he wants to happen. So I could even see him like releasing a bunch of villains uh, in the raft if, if that happens again. Um, and I just really like the character. I thought he was great. It was a really good opener to the first game. And it, I love that for me, like I always remember him when I think about Spider-Man's suit damage throughout these games, because in that first cutscene we got where he like runs Spider-Man through a wall, hits him on the pipe, and then like chucks him through another wall. Like that was just unreal, man. At the time when I saw that, I was like, dude, this is gonna be a good game. Like that was what kind of set me into just being like, dude, like we're up for, we're up for some type of adventure right now. This is gonna be crazy. I think that they could have made him look a little bit different. Uh, he's not my favorite kind of design of Kingpin. I know it's kind of hard to do, 
the 90s animated Spider-Man TV show, that look of Kingpin was like, that. that's like my Kingpin. He looks very similar, um, but just like the voice actor, I guess, and he just wasn't as menacing. Still, I think he is definitely an A-tier character, and I think that he's going to go above Mysterio. Uh, and right after Electro. Alright guys, last but not least with the inv individual character rankings, we have the Wraith. Now, I've replayed Spider-Man 2 two different times now, and the first time through when I first saw Wraith, I was like, they really gave her that haircut. I was like, they really did that? Because I really liked what happened with her and the Magia, and that cop friend that she had dying, and just, she kind of broke down as a character and had a lot of growth throughout both games, but I'm also keeping in mind uh, the relationship that she had with Spider-Man as she was still on the police force i'm thinking about all of it together and like i said i played through the game twice the second one and i really do think that the second time through i was a lot more open to her character i thought it was pretty cool i think it's kind of ridiculous how she can just swing her like scythe thing and then just swing it to stuff because the whole thing about spider-man is like even if he has web shooters without powers it is so unbelievably hard to swing and propel yourself with your own body weight without super strength you would like dislocate shit if you're doing that so yeah she's kind of at like a point and she's like swinging it up and throwing it and then like kind of but like you know and i, I know it's a superhero game so I'm, i don't know i'm just kind of overthinking it but to me that kind of threw me off a little bit uh I, I did like the banter i feel like there's a lot more with her character that could be explored though and i just i kind of felt like there was a lot of that missing in the second game i really do think she'd be in like i probably would have put her in s tier in the beginning of the first game like just just the first game in general i really like the character i really do think though with everything that happened i think it drops her pretty far down and i think that she's honestly like a b character it's close man she's gonna be top of b all right guys i'm gonna do a speed round of all of the crime boss groups as fast as i can first we got the police i think the police were pretty cool in this game a lot of cool interactions with spider-man i do think it belongs in a tier so with these guys i'm not gonna try to finish uh, and kind of put them between characters and stuff just because it's not that big of a deal but i think it's like an a tier right there we got the demons next it was a good introduction of the super cool powers that they had where they'd like hit the ground and smash there were some guys that had uh, these like whips and things that would like catch you in the air and like throw you down it was super cool it reminded me of spider-man 3 from the wii that's a game that i used to have everybody thinks that game's terrible um the demons were really really cool i think they're even better than the police officers in my own opinion uh but they're gonna be top of a tier uh i guess not top but just in a, a tier next guys we have the flame i didn't find a good picture of them so i found this picture of some guy in a spider-man costume on fire that's gonna do it so to be honest man i, I like i said in the uh the part one I thought the flame and the people that were talking in his cult were a lot more resemblant of a Cletus Cassidy than even Cletus Cassidy was. So I like I think these guys were pretty, pretty you know pretty good. There were some of them that I was kind of like I don't know man. They were kind of kind of dull. So I think I'm gonna put the flame in B tier. We're gonna go with that. The Magia. This was a DLC for Spider-Man. I, I don't know if it was uh, the City Never Sleeps at Night, something like that. But, the Magia was sick, they were the ones that caused Yuri and kind of uh, the Hammerhead whole storyline to kind of just continue on. I thought that was really, really cool, and I love the Magia, I think they're A tier. The Hunters. Now, besides the one gripe that I have of Mary Jane being able to take these guys out, I think that that's not really a knock on the Hunters themselves. You want to you wanna view it that way, but like, if any other kind of a you know bad guy was in the scenario, you'd be saying that about them, so it's not that big of a deal. In terms of the hunters, the difference in enemy like variety and just how they battled with Spider-Man as you were kind of playing through the game, I thought that they were S tier, man. And I'm just now realizing right now, I don't have the symbiotes on there. Symbiotes guys are going to go right next to the hunters. They're literally neck and neck. Uh, and I guess the reason I didn't put symbiotes is because Venom's on here and he kind of like did that whole thing. So like Venom's just like a big, big boy, you know? But if the symbiotes were going to be put on a list, it'd be uh, S tier as well. Sable agents guys sable agents these guys were the most annoying enemies you could find but they were loyal they were super strong no matter like how many times you hit them i still like i have a ptsd of like punching and kicking these guys in like full armor and it's just like <laughs> yeah it sucked bro it freaking sucked their s tier a very difficult difficult enemy to just I'm having flashbacks, guys. I need to get out of here. The Underground. Now, these guys are D tier. Last but not least, the Sinister Six. It's got to be up there with Stan Lee in the S tier. Top of the game, top of the, the food chain. I loved the villains that they picked for this. 
Yeah, I want to say Martin Lee was probably the best choice. The only other person that could have been in there would be like Mysterio, which was kind of a miss in the first game, but they brought him back. Like I said, I just wish there was an interaction with Peter and Mysterio. Maybe we'll see it in the future. We know he's out there. He's doing his own thing, but I think that they just absolutely nailed it, man. They added a completely new character into there that I actually ended up growing to like a lot. And it was a huge character piece for Miles and just kind of the growth of his character, the growth throughout their franchise of games. I never thought that I'd make a tier list of so many characters uh, just throughout a couple games. And uh, this is just seriously like an incredible thing. And I'll go back and play these games forever. I could definitely see myself being like 60 years old holding on to my PS5 playing these games. So let me know what you guys thought about my rankings, guys. I know some of these, uh, maybe if I did them another day, if I re-ranked the entire list, maybe a couple of them would be a little bit in the different spots. But overall, I think that the, the tier that they're in is probably the tier that they deserve. And I'm going to stand by that. So, But I'm genuinely curious, guys. What would you guys do if there's any of these guys that you guys disagree on? I know that the Carnage was one of those that I got talked about in the first uh, the first playthrough. If you guys are curious why I put a lot of these guys in the certain rankings they're in, check out the first video. Drop a like if you really, really like it. If you watch it, I would appreciate it because, again, I put a lot of time into these videos and it means a lot to me.